me talk about what, what I understand by problem-based learning. So this is something that I found on the internet and I thought um, it kind of shows what problem-based learning is all about quite clearly. At the beginning of a, of a problem um, on day one, you kind of you set up the problem, obviously, um, and you use an entry event. That means you present the problem in some way. And on day one, you also talk about need to knows. Now, do you all know what a KWL is? I'll type it in the chat. KWL, what's a KWL activity? Anybody know what that is? The letters stand for something. Very good, Beatrice, the first one to type that one in. So the K stands for what you know, what you know, and the W stands for what you want to know, and then the L at the end stands for what we've learned. And then you move into the students work on the problem, resolve the problem in various different ways, and they might need some scaffolding from the teacher. Scaffolding meaning that you're supporting the work in various different ways, uh, giving them access to different materials. If you're in a CLIL setting, which I imagine a lot of you are, then you're scaffolding the language as well as the concepts. You're giving them help with the language so that they can achieve the task using the language of the classroom. And then towards about the fourth day, and this is a very, very, very short time frame, then you move on to the teacher debrief. And this is the part where the students feed back to the teacher uh, what they've learned or what they've worked on during the project. And this is the moment when you would do some assessment. Then, if necessary, you can kind of uh, follow the green arrow, the big green arrow, not the little green arrow, to move back towards the beginning again. Okay, so that's the kind of idea of how problem-based learning would work in a classroom, what kinds of steps it involves. So this is where I'm going to describe a little bit, okay, where can we find those problems? What can we do to actually get started with this? Because that's all theoretical, this is what you need to do, these are the steps that you need to take. But that doesn't help you actually set up the first project in your class. So the first thing you might want to do, the more realistic, the more, um, the more from outside the class the problem is, the better the students are going to want to work on it, the more motivating it is for them to solve that problem if you see what I mean. So it's a good idea to try and find local problems that your students can solve that are related to your content. And then there are three steps that you need to bear in mind. Very easy, three simple steps. And the first one is keep your eyes open. And the second one is linking problems or projects to your learning objectives, which I've just been talking about. And the third one is letting students draw the project. Okay. After the webinar's finished, um, for, for a million more ideas, if you follow the link to Mrs. O's house, which is this one here, you can see that very clearly on the PowerPoint. This is a teacher in the States who does a lot of problem-based learning, and she's um, got a website with all problems that she's done. And we're talking about probably 150 different problems to choose from. So if you do, if you can't find something to use with your students in that page, I would be very surprised. Okay. So we've talked about some kinds of ideas that you might want to work on, but Mrs. O's house has hundreds more. I'm just going to kind of finish off now a little bit. Um, another important thing to do here is to promote collaboration. Okay. So. Um, it, many of the jobs that students will find themselves doing when they leave school involve collaboration in some way. They're going to have to learn to work in teams and groups. Okay? That doesn't mean that you have to insist, we've talked about this already in the webinar, but you, you don't have to insist that they work in groups all the time, but they might need to access information from other groups at certain points in the process. Okay? I'm just going to have a look at the chat because there's a couple of things here. If we have these type of questions, the students won't use English, but their mother tongue, them a teacher of English. That's inevitable <laughs> because they do that because they don't have the language to say what they want to say. Okay, so what you need to do is kind of anticipate as much as possible and reward English use when it happens. You can take a moment to, to listen to what they're saying in their mother tongue and say, fantastic ideas, let's see how we can say that in English and work towards becoming more literate. Um, a good idea is get some advice. Okay, there might be somebody in your school that's already doing something. Use the internet if not. The internet's full of wonderful advice for this kind of thing. 
And this is just what I'm saying to Magda just now, don't expect things to be perfect, <laughs> whether that be their language use or their group work or their collaboration or the solutions that they come up with. This is something that they need to learn to do. Thank you all for participating so much in the chat. Uh, it's lovely to have uh, people who participate so well.